Hi, I'm Reva and I'm in my sewing room today and I was looking through some things that are very near and dear to my heart and thinking on them and, and it made me just really realize how many of us as sewers love to make something for someone else or share our, our handiwork and the love that we have through the things that we create and which is absolutely fabulous. And while I was looking through these little things that I have that I received when I was very, very young, it made me kind of stop and realize not only did it just really bring joy to my heart and the memories, but now that I think about it, this probably is where I got my love from sewing all those years ago. So join me and let's take a look at some really awesome things that were shared with me with love. When I was little, I had a great aunt that lived down in the Portland area. Her name was Great Aunt Maddie Lou. And Maddie Lou lived down in, I would say, equal to a retirement community um, down in the Portland area. When I was little, the term was an old folks home. So she lived in a retirement community down there. And I only met her one time. Uh, most of my family is from well out of state um, in in Texas, but she lived for some reason down in Portland, and I, I really don't even know why. But she was very crafty, and she would send me gifts as a surprise. They were never tied to a birthday or anything like that. And the things that she gave me just really mean so much to me. And I have very little things still from when I was a child, but I do have some things that she made me. So one of the very first things that I recall her making me are these little slippers. And I have no idea where the other one went. But they used to have little jingle bells on them. I remember uh, one had a red and a and a gold and the other had a green and a gold or something like that. But just little, little um, jingle bells on them. And I just loved these little slippers. And anyway, it's kind of cool. But this, oh, this was so, I was so excited when I got this. Look, it's out of a dish soap a bottle. And I remember when I got this, I was so excited. And I, I remembered loving taking it to church. So I have these fabulous pom-poms on the end. Who doesn't love pom-poms? But you just open this up and then this folds down and it becomes a little bassinet. Isn't that the cutest thing? And then it has the wonderful little uh, fringy lacy edge um, that are just so, so cool. And then it came with a baby and I still have the baby. So isn't that cool? And I look, I made a little mattress out of Kleenex in there. Isn't that just silly? Anyhow, just such a cool little thing. And little things that we make for other people might not be all that, you know, impressive really, but the, the amount of love and fun that goes into them is just awesome. I mean, really a dish soap bottle. How, how cool is this? So in here, I have some really wonderful things that I want to show you and um, enjoy the walk down memory lane with me. So we all had, well, most of us had Barbies. My daughter only had a Barbie because she liked the horse it came with. Do you remember back in the day you would buy the Barbie and it would come in a swimsuit and then you had to buy all the clothes extra? I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. I only have a few pieces of clothing that were purchased. This actually was my Barbie doll's first outfit. I think I was, um, well, I was under three when I got this um, because of where we lived. I, I, I know that, but it's a little ice skating outfit. And the, the Barbie shoes that came with this outfit were skates and it had a hat with a little bit of the, the boucle, uh, boucle uh, trim on it. It was just really kind of fun. So that's my little skate dress. And these are just a little um, precursor to what you're going to see. And, and I just want to share with you I have a very small pile of purchased Barbie clothes. So apparently anything that I got didn't mean anything. I believe this was purchased. I can't, I don't really remember, but it's just a nice dress. This I did happen to like. It's a swimsuit cover-up, you know, how fancy. All of our Barbies, they were just so fashionable and so trendy and just, just the height of fashion no matter where they went, even at the pool. 
and I think the idea of a swimsuit cover up is great. Now this is a little top. I don't even remember what it came with, so it really doesn't mean anything to me, but it was in my box. But this, is this not the coolest thing? <laughs> Look at this. It's a little coat that it's a maxi coat if you remember those with the the wonderful fringe did you guys have a maxi coat with the fake fur on it i totally did anyhow but look at the it's got the the little seed beads for buttons and this fabulous big collar i mean that's so cool and then this i have no idea where this came from i probably got it at a garage sale as i did these two little skirts but the cool thing about these skirts i got them at a garage sale but they were made by someone. They were, they're a homemade little skirts. So that brings me into what I want to show you. So this is my Barbie. Now, how many of you uh, sew in your pajamas? Well, she's in her nightgown. So just, you know, forgive her if you would. So this is one of the little uh, nightgowns that my great aunt made for me so it's just kind of kind of fun there but she had quite the wardrobe in fact if you want to do more in your pajamas I have a flannel nightgown do you remember flannel nightgowns I still love my flannel nightgown and then look at this robe it is a quilted robe and she hand stitched the binding on there even the tiny little bias binding around the collar and in the collar facing. I cannot believe how much work went in to all these things that she made me and sent to me. Usually when they came, I would get like a little ensemble, a little set like this, and it was pretty, pretty cool. Now, if you wanna see my first Barbie, I'll show you my first Barbie, are you ready? Yes, I cut her hair. I um, don't know where her body is, but I do have her head. And I remember my mother was so angry that I cut her hair off that it took years for me to get a new Barbie doll. You know, back in the day, we had one Barbie, two Barbies. You didn't get a Barbie for every outfit. You got outfits for your Barbie and you had the one doll. So um, yeah, I gave her bangs and um, yeah, fabulous. It, she's fabulous. Finally, I was able to get a new Barbie and I think I probably was 12 before I got a new Barbie. And this gal, her name is, and this is a, a little dress that I think I got at a garage sale, but her name is Tuesday Taylor. Now look at how cool she is. Her head totally swivels around so she can be a brunette or a blonde. How cool is that, right? Okay, so now let's really get into the meat of the fun things. This is one of the dresses that my aunt made, and it is one of my absolute favorite little dresses. Uh, I probably got these when I was four or five years old, the bulk of what I'm going to show you today. So a very long time ago. And like I mentioned uh, as we were coming into this video, thinking back on this, it made me really ponder how how much of an effect that these wonderful little dresses had on me. I absolutely loved, and every, every package I ever got from uh, Aunt Maddie Lou, I just absolutely loved everything. And I think when she passed away may have been when I started sewing because I wasn't getting these anymore. So look at this. In the winter, you need a beautiful wool coat with this fabulous collar and then it has it's really quite a heavy wool she usually used snaps but again the hand binding on the inside of the coat but how how great is that i mean what a well-dressed barbie i had and her clothes were very unique no one else had them so here is another little dress really a great job with tiny little rickrack and looking at it now her stitch length that she used is so tiny but i guess you would kind of would use a tiny zigzag or i'm sorry a tiny little straight stitch when you're making tiny clothes it looks like it's about a 2.0 so or maybe smaller so that's a pretty pretty tiny one okay so those are pretty cool now we're coming upon some of my favorite things not only did she send everyday garments but every once in a while i'd get a evening gown 
Isn't this fabulous? It has a little mermaid styling, and of course, they're old and they're soiled, but I still have them, so absolutely love it. Now, this one is really pretty cool. It is a halter dress, and it has this fabulous risque uh, slit up the front, and it has a bare back. And I'm trying to think, I thought that there was a jacket that went with this, but there may not have been. Now, as I said, this inspired me to learn how to sew or to design and create my own things. So you're going to love this. This is probably one of my very first creations. I cannot tell you how that's supposed to go on the Barbie, but there's little buttonholes that are very poorly made. And these were, I remember, were for the arms. And then I've turned under and stitched a little facing here. So I'm, I'm sure it was some sort of a wrap of some sort. I do not remember, but there you go. That is probably the start of it all. Do you have anything like that? Kind of fun. Now, my aunt loved bright prints, and I have so many things, or several of the things are somewhat of a um, kind of a Hawaiian Hawaiian theme, or at least that's what I always thought of them as moo-moos. Um, but yeah, this is a, a really great little dress set in sleeves and in the back. I love this little dress. It's a little day dress, and how fabulous. Look at the little, the little drop waist. Very, very 60s. And this is a hoot. Look at this pantsuit. Isn't this great? So sometimes my Barbie would wear this alone as a dress, but a lot of times she would have the pantsuit on. So this is, was really, I really love this one. Don't you love the fabric? Look at that. Really fun. And then handpicked again at the, at the neck with the bias, the tiny little bias. So she did um, little tiny stitches, which show, I don't care. That's pretty fun. Little get tiny gathers at the sleeves and they're bound sleeves. How neat is that? And of course, all of Barbie's clothes have darts. How many of you learn to sew doing Barbie clothes? Why do we do that to ourselves? Barbie clothes are the hardest thing to make. They're so, so tiny. So this is really a fun little um, ensemble. The skirt is quilted. If you, can you see the quilting there? So it's quilted. And then um, it has, again, the bias hem and a bias waist. But a nice A-line skirt. And then the overblouse is a great little shawl collar. Um, and it's a all-in-one piece arm, so a, a um, kimono style sleeve, which would be very easy to make um, as far as as far as little tiny clothes go. And then on the same style, we have this one, and this is really cool. Look at the nice little tiny buttons that she used here for the for the down the front. And this one, I think based on this is a heavy fabric, uh, but she hand whip stitched the collar into place as opposed to using a bias with that. Now this one came with a pair of pants that were fashioned very much like this. It was a pant suit and they were a matching one. I have no idea where the pants went. I only have a couple of pieces that I know are missing. One is the pants to go with this top and the other is the little halter top. It was it was a halter top. Let me show you what it was kind of like. So it was basically this part with a band around the back that just had one snap. So it'd just basically be the bodice part of this dress is what went with this these pants and you could choose, do you want the, the flare, the bell bottom, or do you want the regular pants? My Barbie was styling. Then this, these two came together. It was absolutely fabulous. I got a bridesmaid's dress and a wedding dress. And these wonderful little flowers were also on this, but I think I pulled them off to make a bouquet for the bride. You know, who knows what I did there. But just really, really fun, fun dresses. And take a look, even the back, the pattern of the fabric, of the lace was matched on the back. 
Isn't that fabulous? So cool. So cool. I'm enjoying going through them. Now, next is my absolute favorite piece of all time. I have a beautiful evening gown in pink velvet and a matching coat. Look at that with the rabbit fur trim at the collar. What Barbie would not look amazing going to dinner in this fabulous outfit. So remember, if you want to make something fun and you give it as a gift, whether it be big or small or easy or you put more time into it, you never know how much something small can influence somebody else. Over my lifetime, I have kept these clothes and just a few other things, but this is something that I will always cherish. The legacy that Aunt Maddie Lou gave me not only was a treasure trove of fun memories, but it also was a love for these beautiful clothes and how she created them. So why not start now? <laughs> <laughs> make yourself something cool, but you never know. Giving a gift like this may be inspiring to someone else. So enjoy your craft, enjoy your day in your sewing room, and remember to think about others.